Namaste. Well, recently we did a video on Shankaracharya's method of exposition and explanation. And I wanted to enlarge on that with a really good example. And I found the perfect example in his commentary on the Brahma Sutras. So we did already a series on the first Adhikarana of Brahma Sutras here. And so now we're going to do the second Adhikarana. Adhikarana means a topic. So a topic may include one or more sutras and the associated commentaries. So this second Adhikarana is on the topic of Brahman is the creator. Brahman is the cause of the universe. So now it's full moon day, poya day. So uh, we shave our heads. Huh? We go full chrome dome <laughs> in honor of the full moon. I just saw, I mean, just before doing this video, a wonderful sight, which is the full moon setting and illuminating the clouds from beneath. Everything was silvery. Everything was magical. So I hope this series is going to be blessed by the auspicious full moon. And even though it's an eclipse moon and eclipses are considered inauspicious, if you can process out the astrological elements beforehand by means of, you know, Jyotish and prognostication, then you're free to enjoy the strong energy flows during the full moon and even during the eclipse. Just don't go out while the eclipse is happening. Stay inside. You don't want those rays to fall directly on you. So uh, with that caveat, let's begin. Topic two, origin, etc., of the universe. Opponent. It has been said that Brahman is to be deliberated on. What, again, can be the definition of that Brahman? The footnote says, Brahman has no definition and hence cannot be deliberated on. There is a certain philosophy that Brahman is so transcendental and so beyond everything that it cannot even be defined. But the Upanishads define Brahman in innumerable ways, <laughs> mostly by saying what it's not. So Brahman, although it's not this, it's not that, neti neti, it is the origin of everything. And that's what Shankaracharya is going to explain in his commentary. So he continues, Vedantin. Hence, the venerable aphorist says, Janmad yasya yataha, that yataha, from which are derived Janmadi, birth, etc., asya, of this, universe. That is Brahman, from which are derived the birth, etc., of this universe. In the Upanishads, this, Asya, generally refers to the material universe, the creation, the manifestation, and that, Tat, generally refers to Brahman which is the origin, the cause. So, with that in mind, let's continue. John Mahdi can be split up thus. That of which Janma, birth, is the Adi, first. 
In the phrase Janmadi, we have that class of Bahuvrihi compound, where the subject presented is apprehended along with its attributes. The footnote gives the example. In Pitambarang Pashya, see the man with a yellow cloth. The man is known along with his yellow cloth. So in the phrase Janmadiasya, the birth, continuance, and destruction of the universe is known along with the Brahman, which is the cause. So this is the quality of Brahman. Brahman is the cause of the birth, continuation, and destruction of everything. The compound implies birth, continuance, and dissolution. The mention of birth first is in accord with the statements in the Vedic text and the nature of things. The Vedic assertion is this, that from which these beings take birth, Taitariya 3.1, where origin, continuance, and dissolution are revealed in an order. As for the nature of things, a thing that has come to exist through birth can have continuance and disintegration. By the word idam, this, occurring as a constituent of the word asya, of this, is indicated the entity, that is, the universe, that is presented immediately by perception, etc. And the sixth case ending, that is, of, in it, is meant for indicating the relation of that entity with birth, etc. By the word yataha, from which is indicated a cause, and the clause that is Brahman has to be added at the end to complete the sentence. So the meaning of the whole aphorism is, that omniscient and omnipotent source must be Brahman, from which occur the birth, continuance, and dissolution of this universe that is manifested through name and form, that is associated with diverse agents and experiences, that provides the support for actions and results, having well-regulated space, time, and causation, and that defies all thoughts about the real nature of its creation. In other words, Brahman is inconceivable, and the way in which it manifests the universe is also inconceivable. Oh yeah, we can talk about it, you know, we can give it a name, and we can even give it a form, and say, look, this cosmic creation, uh, this is it. But Brahman itself remains outside the scope of perception, understanding, explanation, and even inference. The only thing we can do is lay the grounds for the inference that the Creator is Brahman. We can't actually observe it creating, huh? because we are the, one of its creations. <laughs> So, before we exist, we can't observe anything. And after we come into existence, Brahman is also imperceptible. Why is that? Because we are Brahman, aham brahmasmi, huh? and we cannot see ourselves, just as the eye cannot see itself without a mirror. So, in this case, the Upanishads, and the Brahma Sutras serve as the mirror by which we can cognize Brahman at least indirectly, to some extent, but never completely. Birth, continuance, and dissolution only are mentioned here, since the other modifications that things are heir to are included in them. In other words, growth, transformation, and decay. Growth and transformation are really forms of new birth or evolution, while decay is a form of death. Had the six modifications listed by Yaska in the words, it originates, exists, grows, etc., been accepted here, 
It might lead to the doubt that the origin, existence, and destruction of the universe from the primary source, Brahman, are not referred to, these modifications being possible only during the continuance of the universe. Yaska's Nirukta mentions six kinds of modification. Birth, continuance, growth, transformation, decay, death. The aphorism, however, enumerates the three mentioned in the Upanishads, so as not to get involved in any other philosophy. In order that this doubt may not arise, the origin that takes place from Brahman and the continuance and merger that occur in that itself are referred to. So this is a little bit convoluted, a little bit complex, but in all systems of philosophy, there are six changes. Gestation, birth, growth, manifestation of byproducts, dwindling, and death. And the seventh stage brings a return, either rebirth or mergence into Brahman. Apart from God, possessed of the qualifications already mentioned, the universe, as described, cannot possibly be thought of as having its origin, etc., from any other factor. For example, pradhan, primordial nature, which is insentient, or from atoms, or non-existence, or some soul under worldly conditions, for example, Hiranyagarbha. Nor can it originate spontaneously, for in this universe, people, desirous of products, have to depend on specific space, time, and causation. Those who stand by God as the cause, that is, the Nayayakas, rely on this very inference alone for establishing the existence, etc., of God as distinguished from the transmigrating soul. The inference of the Nyayayakas, the logicians, is that, well, we can't find any other cause by observation or by logic or even by inference that is capable of creating the universe except for Brahman, God, the absolute, the complete whole. The origin of everything must be complete because we see this universe is also a complete unit in itself. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnam Udachate. See? That's the opening of the Ishopanishad. That this universe is complete and that Brahman is complete. This complete universe manifests from that complete Brahman. Yet even though so many complete units emanate from the complete Brahman, the Brahman's completeness is never dissipated. It remains whole, full, complete, Purnam. So this is the mystery of creation that even though so many universes, so many living beings, so many phenomena emanate from what has to be Brahman, because it couldn't be anything else, that Brahman never becomes less, never becomes diminished, never becomes anything but full and complete. How is this possible? Because the creation is Maya. Aung Tatsa. Aung Shakti Aung. Aung Namah Shivaya.